All right, so this is the Viewfind 9.1 What's New, What's Changed video. Uh, we've got a minor release coming this month, and this will cover everything that is new here. So first of all, a few new features. Uh, we've had a couple of new search backends contributed, one for the EBSCO Publication Finder, which lets you search uh, titles in the EBSCO knowledge base, and one for the database's A to Z portion of LibGuides. Uh, both of these are essentially new features related to existing backends, but they add a little bit more flexibility and are particularly useful uh, in multi-column search if you have subscriptions to these services or for uh, displaying recommendation modules. Uh, we've also had a few new uh, ILS driver methods added. So there are some new features that drivers can support. Of course, these are not implemented for all of our drivers yet, but if it's a feature you need, uh, it could be added to your driver as long as the underlying ILS supports it. Uh, they are get proxying users, which uh, is used for getting a list of users that have a proxy relationship with uh, the current user. Uh, get URLs for record, uh, which is used for getting links related to a specific record ID. Uh, it's specifically being used in order to link from viewfind into the Koha OPAC, but it could be used for other applications as well. And purge transaction history, which supports a new feature to purge user transaction history. Uh, there's also a new ILS driver feature that's been implemented, which is the idea of an uncertain availability status. So historically, availability status was binary, but sometimes you don't know. And so now that can be represented in the viewfind system. Uh, beyond those new features, there's a whole bunch of improvements. Uh, we've enhanced some of our command line tools. So, uh, for example, the import mark script can now accept multiple files in a single call, which can be a huge time saver because there's a lot of overhead in starting up and shutting down SolarMark. But if you provide a whole series of file names, you save on all of that overhead. Uh, also, the util deletes tool for removing records from solar now has an ID prefix switch. So if you prefix your IDs and you want to delete all of the records in a mark file, you can specify the prefix and it will work as desired. Uh, we've also had several improvements contributed to combined search. Uh, you can now turn on advanced search links uh, in each column of combined search results. There's a new grid layout. Uh, which is an alternative to the uh, current distributed layout that does a better job of keeping the columns in the configured order uh, when they react and reformat on smaller screens. And uh, there's the ability to turn on a jump menu at the top of the page to jump down to particular columns. Uh, there have also been some improvements to the cache system. Uh, now, when you have uh, record caching turned on in fallback mode, uh, it can be set up to display a warning that you're viewing a cached version of a record, which might be helpful for providing context to users. Uh, and also, the entire file-based caching system can now be turned off through configuration uh, if you want to be sure nothing is being cached. This could be useful, for example, when troubleshooting things. Uh, there have been some other new configuration improvements and new settings. Uh, one significant thing is there's support for a new config file called durlocations.ini, which can be put inside your local settings directory in the root. And this specifies where inside the directory some of your files are found and can be used to set up a chain of inheritance to other directories, uh, which offers a lot more flexibility if you have you know, many instances of viewfind and you want to share uh, configurations between them in complex ways. Uh, another new setting is the ability to specify more than one fav icon in a theme. Uh, previously, viewfind supported just one, but sometimes it's useful to specify many so that you can offer different sizes and formats that will be used by the browser in different contexts. Uh, and finally, uh, there are now config settings in searches.ini that can be used to configure Solar's uh, highlighting parameters. So 
for example, uh, I ran into some problems where snippets were displaying in weird ways. And the easiest way to fix that was to give some more specific highlighting parameters to Solar to uh, shorten the size of the snippets. Uh, there have also been some significant improvements to internationalization. Uh, there's a new language code supported called debug. Uh, and if you turn on the language debug, you will see all of the raw translation strings and associated parameters instead of anything being translated. This could be useful if you're trying to figure out uh, where in the language files a particular string in the interface is coming from. Uh, there's also a new setting called fallback languages, which can be used to control uh, language inheritance. So if Viewfind tries to translate a string and it's not available in the currently active language, previously Viewfind would always then default to English. But with this setting, you can specify different fallback languages instead and in order of searching. And we have a whole new interface language, uh, Northern Sami. Uh, there have also been improvements and updates to a few ILS drivers for Alma, Folio, and Sierra REST. So if you use these systems, uh, check the changelog for more details. Um, additionally, some other miscellaneous improvements. Uh, if you have search tabs turned on and you have filtered tabs and you apply a hidden filter that does not match any of the tabs, uh, you will now get a custom search tab displayed to differentiate that. Uh, and this can be turned off through configuration if you don't want it. Uh, you can specify a custom solar port at installation time. So uh, if you don't want to use the default 8983, there's now a way you can set that up without having to manually edit a whole bunch of files. You just specify a different port number through the uh, install.php script at the command line. And there's been a lot of accessibility improvements. So um, many templates have changed and that's something to be aware of if you're upgrading your custom themes. I don't think any of these changes are too shocking, but some of them are impactful because you know they involve things like using more specific semantic tags and so forth. Could cause some conflicts with your local customizations that you'll need to reconcile when you update. Uh, there have also been some dependency changes. Uh, we've raised our minimum PHP version to 8.0 since the PHP 7 line is no longer supported. Uh, we've upgraded Solar to 9.3. Uh, as always with this Solar upgrade, uh, fully re-indexing everything is thus recommended. And we've upgraded SolarMark to version 3.5. And while we're talking about SolarMark, let's talk about uh, indexing changes because the upgrade to the new SolarMark does have one significant impact, which is that older versions of SolarMark uh, required translation maps to be stored in Latin 1 encoding, which was really problematic because everything else in Viewfind is UTF-8. Uh, that has been addressed, and now uh, translation maps are expected to be in UTF-8. But that means that if you have custom translation maps containing special characters and they're in Latin 1 encoding, you will need to convert them to UTF-8 before doing further indexing or else uh, you might get some weird characters in your index. Uh, additionally, and this isn't related to SolarMark but is related to indexing, uh, you should re-index all of your XML records. I mean, you need to re-index anyway because of the solar upgrade, but it's particularly important to re-index XML uh, because one of the significant bug fixes in 9.1 is that we discovered that the uh, title sort field was being populated using different normalization algorithms between SolarMark and our XML import tool. And this was resulting in uh, some problems in the alphabetical browse and some inconsistent sorting. So we changed all of our XML import to uh, match SolarMark. Uh, so you need to re-index to take advantage of that. And similarly, if you have custom XML imports, you should review uh, the changes in the main project to title sort indexing and make sure that your code matches if you want title sorting and alphabetical browsing to work consistently. Uh, we've also made a few changes to integrations with external services. Uh, for EBSCO Discovery Service, um, there's been a new configuration setting added to EDS INI uh, so that it uses uh, separate URLs for 
accessing the API and establishing new sessions. In most cases, these values are the same, but there are some situations where they need to be different. So if you've customized the API URL setting in your eds.ini, you might need to uh, take a look at the session URL setting as well and make it match. I don't think this affects very many people, if any. Uh, additionally, when the EBSCO publication finder backend was added, it utilizes some of the EDS code, and that led to a bit of refactoring. So if you have low-level custom EDS code, you might want to review the changes. But again, this seems like an unlikely situation. Uh, and a few other things have been revised. The uh, cover loaders for Google and Orb have been rewritten to add caching support. Again, this shouldn't impact anyone unless you've customized these, which seems unlikely. Uh, and the viewfind service recaptcha class was significantly rewritten because the Laminas recaptcha library it depends on changed significantly as well. So if you've customized that, another area where uh, work may be needed, but it's unlikely that you've customized that. Uh, there have also been some user interface changes. We did a little bit of uh, rerouting. So blended search used to be uh, at the search blended route, but in order to add more functionality, it was moved out to its own controller. So that other route has been deprecated. Uh, it still works and redirects, but you don't want to uh, rely on it in the future. And similarly, historic transaction support has been given its own uh, method in the checkouts controller instead of being part of the My Research controller. Uh, and a few other things. Hierarchical facet displays have been totally rebuilt to improve accessibility and eliminate uh, the use of JS tree. So if you've customized any of that, you'll want to review our changes. And uh, icon helper templates have been adjusted to fix some inconsistent escaping behavior. Um, so if you've created your own icon format for some reason, uh, you might want to review this. Otherwise, it shouldn't matter to you. And um, many of our translation strings and the formatting of our language files have been adjusted to support uh, integration with the localized internationalization platform. So if you have custom language files, you can just use the command line uh, normalize language tool and it will uh, bring everything up to spec. But if you've overridden your strings, you might want to review the details in the change log to see if if any of the strings that you've overridden have been renamed or adjusted. Uh, there aren't a whole lot, but there's a, a little list there. Finally, uh, some deprecations and removed features. The viewfind recommend search object class has been deprecated in favor of viewfind recommend abstract search object. This has always been an abstract class. It just seemed to uh, be clearer to include abstract in the name for consistency with other parts of the code. So we uh, we added it in a backward compatible compatible way in 9.1. We'll finish that cleanup in 10.0. Uh, we also removed a few things because OCLC discontinued some services without replacing them. So the WorldCat Identities Recommendation Module is gone, and the OCLC Identities Autocomplete Handler is also gone. Uh, if you use these in your configuration, you, you won't encounter any errors, but they'll just be silently ignored. Uh, and finally, there was a file in one of our themes called bootstrapcustom.css, uh, which was basically an example of how you could override some things with CSS, but we never used it, and it was confusing people, so we just deleted it. And that's it. So just a, a reminder of some resources. Uh, if you are going to upgrade, my recommended method is to do it using Git, and there's a video on how to upgrade Viewfind using Git so you can see the process that I use for all of my viewfind upgrades. Uh, and also there's this blog post about automatically updating local custom files with Git. Um, this is the method I use to synchronize changes in the core code with uh, custom templates. It saves me a lot of time and trouble. I encourage you to do this too if you have a lot of custom templates. And that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, you can always reach out to me at the usual email address, damian.katz at villanova.edu, or you can find me on the Viewfind Slack. And that's it. Thank you very much.